Hey everybody, what's happening? Welcome back to another episode of Aquaporn with me, Steve, your host. I uh, actually got a little bit of uh, bad news. I took the gamble. I knew I was taking the gamble. I took the gamble and I lost, okay? For all you people out there who are thinking, I told you so. I took the gamble and I lost. I was excited. What are you going to do? I did introduce Marine Ick into my system. Total bummer. But I'm the one who gambled. So what am I going to do? Cry about it? No, I'm not going to cry about it. I'm going to figure out how to fix this. The Red Flame Angel was the culprit. Red Flame Angel had Ick. Uh, Red Flame Angel is no longer with us. Uh, I couldn't get the quarantine hospital tank set up in time. So, as you can see, the rock work is different. I couldn't replicate the original rock work to save my life but uh, I think this will grow on me I added a lot more caves and go throughs seeing as the angelfish when I first put them in there dug it a lot so I added a bunch more of those a lot more little territories and such I really miss the original skate but this one will grow on me so I got all the other fish down in their nice little quarantine tank let's go over the quarantine tank so I ran out in the middle of the night to old Walmart open 24 hours thank God picked up myself a $13 10 gallon tank now why didn't I do this in the first place why didn't I do this to quarantine my fish I guess I was just too excited you know what are you gonna do like I said I can't cry about it just gotta do the right thing from here on out uh, the quarantine tank you wanted bare bottom um, you don't want to uh, make it rough on cleaning and you don't want like substrate and stuff for the ick or any disease to to sit in plus you you want to make sure that the water is pristine as possible bare bottom makes that easier so $13 tank I had a $5 or I'm sorry a hang on the back uh, filter for my five gallon tank that uh, I just slapped down there real quick and then I made a sponge filter because the five gallon hang on the back filter isn't going to be enough sponge, fil uh, sponge filters are so easy to make you can look it up on YouTube online they're all over the place basically just take a piece of PVC drill some holes down near the bottom I got fancy and mounted it on a piece of plexiglass that I had and uh, I put some some rock in it to weigh it down a little bit and then I just took some uh, sponge that I luckily had in my sump. I had some sponges in my sump that I was never going to keep there permanently. And uh, just tied those around with some fishing line. Tied them around to cover the holes. Put in the airline tubing with a little air stone on it. And voila, you have yourself a sponge filter. Uh, so I got some mature media on there. And then I also put some sponges in that hang on the back filter. So... And I was able to cycle it immediately, luckily. And then I just cut up a bunch of PVC and threw it in there for hiding places and, and such. Oh yeah, I did get a new flame angel. I couldn't help it. Uh, I wanted both these fish and you have to introduce them together. As you can see, there's... It, I don't know. I don't think they're in shock. They've been in here a while uh, together, so... There's no territorial issues in here yet and then the clowns are chilling too in there so why didn't I do this in the first place lazy and excited and now I'm paying the price people paying the price so first things first know your enemy so let's go over a little bit what marine ick is all about all right, I had to get my notes because I don't want to give you all the straight dope. I don't want to make any mistakes here. So I made some notes for y'all. I'm reading off cue cards. I usually shoot these things off the cuff. But uh, this is a serious problem and a serious issue a lot of people have. So the straight out on Marine Ick is definitely necessary. So there's several stages of life of Marine Ick. The one that we can all see is the trophon stage trophon stage is where it's on your fish looks like a little piece of sugar or a little piece of salt on your fish that's 
the parasite actually eating and feeding on your fish. Uh, it's going to feed on your fish for three to seven days uh, before it drops off. So that's why some people think it, they're cured. It drops off and they don't see it and they're like, oh, there's no problem. But there's even a bigger problem happening. So after three to seven days, it drops off, settles in the rock or substrate and kind of crawls around in there. And it goes into the tomon stage. Within 18 hours, they insist and they start to reproduce and they re produce hundreds of these tomites in the cyst and uh, that will incubate for like 3 to 28 days and so there's hundreds of these before they hatch and when they hatch they come out as what they call thurons those are the free swimming those are the ones that your UV sterilizers and stuff will get if they travel through they'll get a lot of those but in the thuron stage when they're hatching free swimming they only have 24 to 48 hours to find a host to find another fish to attach to otherwise they're gonna perish so the the thurons only live 24 to 48 hours without finding a fish to attach to uh, during my research I found this really cool thing that you know they actually purposely drop off where your fish goes to sleep at night so that way when they hatch your fish is there and <laughs> I just found that really interesting, uh, just the kind of the cycle of life and, and that, you know, these creatures know, okay, it's, it's night, we're going to drop off, we're going to settle here in the substrate, and then hatch, and that fish is going to be there the next night, because fish usually sleep in the same area all the time. Just found that pretty interesting. So, at, so doing the research on what I'm going to do to uh, kill or cure the ick. The two biggest things I came across were copper treatment and hyposalinity treatment. Copper treatment is poisonous to your fish. It didn't seem like it was really easy to do without overdosing or killing your fish. Uh, hyposalinity is a lot easier on your fish but uh, it's a lot harder on me. It's a lot harder on you the fish keeper because there's a lot in ins and outs and what to do with hyposalinity. Okay, so I've chosen hyposalinity treatment uh, to cure ick or rid these fish of ick. Even though they didn't have any signs, everything in the tank has it. If one thing has it, they all have it. Don't, th don't think otherwise. So, after spending all day wet and salty finally caught the fish put them in the QT tank now you can use water from your main display on your first time setting up your quarantine tank or your hospital tank rather uh, simply because the fish are diseased the water's diseased on the first time it doesn't matter how hop, uh, hyposalinity treatment works is by uh, osmotic pressure Basically, the theory is you lower the salinity, you're lowering the osmotic pressure, and the ick in its thermont or thermon stage literally explodes. Uh, your inverts, crabs, shrimp, snails, they can't take a lower salinity, so don't do this in your main display. It's got to be done in a hospital tank. Uh, so you set it up and then you eventually lower it from where I was at was 1.025 and over 36 hours I lowered it to 1.009 that's pretty low any lower and it's gonna kill your fish any higher it's not gonna do a thing to kill the ick so you gotta keep it dialed in there on that 1.009 it's like a tightrope that's why it's hard on the fish keeper now you can lower it quicker you know if it's an emergency your fish is about to croak it's about to bite the big one you can actually go right from right to it you know they'll handle it uh, but you want to lower it a little slower than that if you can but if you're in a pinch man your fish won't die if you go right from 1.025 right to 1.009 they can handle that kind of pressure. It actually, uh, it actually relieves them 
a little bit of stress I think I read that it uh, it doesn't stress them out that it it uh, pretty much relieves them of toxins and makes it easier for them to breathe because basically what they're doing is they're breathing they're, they're using fresh water so the less salt the easier it is for that on their system but prolonged exposure to hyposalinity is going to hurt their kidneys so where was I? I kind of got sidetracked there folks I'm sorry okay so you lower it down to your 1.009 now that is I thought that that was going to be the hardest part to ma maintain was salinity I'm like oh man the salinity is going to swing it's going to be really tough actually the salinity isn't the problem salinity has been rock solid now it's only been a couple days but I barely have to top off this tank compared to my my bigger tank and uh, the salinity stays pretty dialed in at the 1.009 I've checked it about six times morning and night during the middle of the day just keeping an eye on it that's locked in what's given me the problem which the issue with hypo salinity is pH now when you're using the such a light salinity your water's not getting buffered nearly enough and it's hard to buffer the water to keep that that solid pH and you don't want that pH swinging especially when uh, you know you have a weak fish so what you're gonna do don't use any stuff bottles off the shelf or anything like that you can use straight up baking soda but what's even better is sodium carbonate so regular baking soda is sodium bicarbonate and if you can use sodium carbonate now don't run out and look and where the heck can I get sodium carbonate all you gotta do is take your baking soda and you bake it in the oven there's instructions online you can just cook it at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes and you've got yourself sodium carbonate that's even better to use but in a pinch use baking soda now what's the problem with that is, is there's no real formula so it's tedious work to add a couple drops and then wait five hours see what it did to the pH because especially in the quarantine you don't want to be doing that you do it in a bucket and and get that up and then use that and mix that with your quarantine water and raise the pH slowly you don't want it swinging and and finally got uh, you know it's a pain in the ass I'm not gonna lie to get that buffered that's the hardest part of this whole process so far but now I have a whole bucket here of RO water that's buffered to the correct pH which is 8.2 for me I don't know what it is for you but it was 8.2 for me and uh, that's buffered so my top offs gonna be buffered and that's gonna help maintain my pH now when you're making your salt water you gotta do the same thing and so basically I figured it out that the mixture of two tablespoons of baking soda for 16 ounces of water I mix that all up and then use three milliliters of that for five gallons of water that gave me my 8.2 now is that gonna be the same every time I sure as hell hope so but at least I got a guide point but that's gonna be the hardest part for you is maintaining the pH it's gonna be the hardest part for me as well now water quality you want to keep water quality as pure as possible even though I have uh, mature filter media in here and it's uh, you know I don't have to worry about ammonia or nitrite you do want to keep an eye on all your water parameters throughout and uh, do regular water changes I plan on doing a 20 percent change every two days so not every other day I'm talking tomorrow and the next day and then on the third day so on day one and day two I'm doing 20 percent on day three I'm doing a 50 percent so that's gonna happen every day for the next eight weeks folks eight weeks of that but pay the price you know you want to play you have to pay and uh that's the price I'm gonna pay just to make sure that I get this out of my system and that I never have to deal with it again
So maintaining your pH, water quality and clarity. Now you want this in your system for, or you want to do this hyposalinity treatment for eight weeks. Uh, four weeks just to be sure, because if you remember I said that's three to 28 days it takes before they hatch and become free swimming. So you gotta wait that period of time in case it's in here, you gotta wait at least those four weeks. So then it's another four weeks just for good measure you know so just another four weeks to make sure you don't see any spots or any uh, turrons on your on your fish so you don't want to see the little white spot again you know so you're gonna keep go four weeks and then you're gonna keep an eye on it and then in week seven you want to slowly raise your salinity now you can drop the salinity pretty quick on a fish uh, but you want to raise it slow so you're gonna want to raise it 0.002 to 0 0.003 every day for seven days until you get back up to the the required salinity for your system. You can go eight days or nine days. You can stretch it out a bit, but you can't go lower. Don't try to do a net in six. Go seven or greater. So I got a big challenge ahead of me. It's going to challenge all my fish keeping skills. But what would this hobby be without a little bit of a challenge, right? It'd be kind of boring if you just were able to set it up and and that was it. You know, these are the kind of the bumps in the road, the rookie mistakes. Don't cry about it, just get it done. Get it, do the right thing. So, I'll be keeping you updated on this. You'll see me in about eight weeks. I'll let you know how this treatment uh, handled. If I hit any bumps in the road as well, I'll let you know plenty of things for me to do on this build and I will catch you next time. Comment, rate, subscribe.